let's do it. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, line up in your mountain pose. Ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, everything lined up. Spine stretching apart nicely. And breathe. So let your belly move, but remember, you still want those bottom ribs towards your spine and up so your core stays active but not clenched. And sitting bones down, shoulder blades down so that you're lengthening through the back of your body, getting that spine nice and open. And just take a moment to breathe, getting that yoga frame of reference inward. And remember, personal practice doing what's right for you at all times. So inhaling, bring your arms out to shoulder level, stretch way up and up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart, elbows a little bit back. Stretch way out to the front, keep your shoulders down. And then exhale, hands behind you, clasping your fingertips. And lift your heart. You can press the heels of your palms together if you want a little bit more shoulder open. So press your hands down and your heart up, head back, and then pivot over at the hips coming into your forward position. Kind of bend the knees if you want, or if you want to stretch your hamstrings a little bit more, lift the sitting bones, then lift the knees toward the thighs. So take a moment there, just move your head around, get that neck releasing. And then knees bent, ribs up, sitting bones down, Wind your way slowly, bone at a time, up and into the upper body through your back bend. Stretch back through your head, down with your knuckles, and open your chest. And then inhale up, release your arms, take a moment feeling that circulation and energy flow. And again, same thing, inhaling, stretch out, shoulders down. Hands to your heart, stretch forward, shoulders still down, and then hands behind with the opposite finger on the outside as you clasp. Lift your heart, stretch your head back, pivot over, exhaling into your forward bend. And again, just deepen as much or as little as your spine would like this morning. And relax. And then again, work your way slowly back to the top. Lift your heart, hands toward the floor, and head reaching away from your feet. Keep breathing. And on an inhalation, come on up. Release back to mountain. And just take a moment again, feeling your spine, noticing what's going on in your body, and spreading your toes. Inhale, arms are reaching out, shoulder level. Turn the palms up, bring your arms over your shoulders. Keep the shoulders down though. Clasp your hands above your head and push your sitting bones, shoulder blades down. So again, ribs are in and you're leaning over without twisting. So make sure, sure both shoulders are even as you come to the side into that lateral stretch. Push the foot down, you lean away from, out through your hands, out through your head, and breathe. And then inhale back to the center, switch the other wrist in front, clasp your hands again. Again, keeping the arms right by your ears, shoulders and shoulder blades down, lean to that opposite side. Get that stretch going through your ribs, maximize it by pushing your foot away, and your hands out. And again, <clears throat> just breathe. And once more, inhale upright and exhale back to mountain. Take a moment, feel your sides a little bit more open. And we'll do our twist. So remember, stretch the spine apart, base of the skull and bottom of the spine going in opposite directions. Inhale the arms to the shoulders, palms up, Arms over your shoulders, shoulders staying down, clasp your elbows. And again, reach the elbows and the head up and the sitting bones down and exhale into the chest. Keep the knees a little bent if you'd like. Keep the weight on both feet. Stretch it up as you breathe in. And on an exhalation, pivot over. 
So come into your forward bend in the twist just as much or as little as your body wants. And notice how that feels. See if you can keep the weight on both feet evenly. And then keeping your arms by your ears, work your way back up and look toward the ceiling, shoulders down, elbows back. And remember, always gentle on your low back if you're twisting. Don't overdo anything. And then on an inhalation, come back upright, exhale around to the center and switch your arms around. Again, shoulders and sitting bones down, stretch your spine apart, exhale to the other side. And again, make sure you're moving your whole body together into the twist. Exhale over. And again, just deepen as much into that forward bend as you go. Notice one side may go deeper, that's not unusual, given that we are habitual people and we use our bodies unevenly most days. And then again, on an inhalation, you can work your way back up, staying in your twist and lift your heart. Elbows back, look overhead, stretch your head out, away from you, so that that neck gets a good stretch. Make sure that lower back is protected. Chest high. And then inhale upright, exhale back to the center. Let's bring the arms up, keep the shoulders down, keep everything nice and straight and flat, pivot at your hips, bring your body parallel to the floor as much as you can. So the sitting bones go one way, crown and fingertips the other way, shoulder blades still towards your waist, stretch it out, and then drop into rag doll. Just relax, lift your sitting bones. Bring your hands behind you if you want extra low back stretch and pull in maybe a little bit more, only if you feel like it. And then release the arms back to the front, just hanging. And chin in, ribs up, sitting bones down. Again, wind that spine all the way up. Shoulders back and down and into neck and pose. So take a moment there, breathing, noticing your body and allowing everything to call your attention to wherever you need to be focused. So let's do one shoulder thing at the wall before we get to the floor. So go ahead and find a place on the wall, a door or something that you can just put your hands against. And then hold the hands right in front of your shoulders. Take a good step back, now first, bring your hands up about a handprint higher than your shoulders, and then take that step back. Push your sitting bones back so that your hips come right over your ankles, and drop your chest and armpits toward the floor. Reach to the top of your head up toward your hands so you're not tucking in your chin. And you're sinking through that upper back right across the shoulder area, getting a nice opening across your heart. So keep pushing your sitting bones back, keep pressing into your palms evenly into the wall, and lift your crown up toward your hands as you push the sitting bones back and the ribs down. So get into that upper body for the back bend here, just opening through the chest. Letting everything sink and relax. And then bend your knees, tuck in your chin, take a step forward, and release your arms down. And just feel that opening across the chest a little bit more. And then back to our mats, we're going to stretch up, pivot forward, so swan diving, arms out to the side, chest and chin lead, and then drop into rag doll. Slide your hands up onto your shins right under your knees. Again, straightening your back. You can keep the chin tucked in so the neck keeps stretching. And then bending your knees, just drop in your rag doll. Once more, arms out to the side. Lift your heart, push your sitting bones back, get that parallel to the floor spine. And then keeping the arms right at shoulder level, pivot up, see if they're still at shoulder level. And then raise them toward the ceiling and down to your heart. And then one more time, looking at your hands, bring them toward the ceiling. 
So a little upper body back bend again, as much as your body wants. Chest forward and up. We'll look at your thumbs and maybe pull them back a little bit further so that you're extending through that upper back into a back bend. And then exhaling, come on, following your hands. First to your heart, pivoting over, just dropping into rag dog. Again, hands onto your shins under your knees, that halfway up stretch, lengthening. And then bend your knees and come on all the way to the mat. And we're going to go into child's pose for our transition. So remember, pad where you need to, under your ankles, between your calves and thighs, hips and heels, wherever. Under your forehead if you need to. So take a moment. The more your knees are together, the more that low back gets your stretch. The more your knees are apart, the more you can breathe more easily. So just make your adjustments however you need to. Breathe and relax. And then we're going to sit up and bring our legs out into staff position. So hips, knees, ankles, toes, everything lined up. Kneecaps toward the ceiling, so if they tend to drop out, remember, rotate at the top of the thighs so those whole, whole leg areas stay lined up, bones still, just like in mountain pose. Shoulders over your hips, ribs in and up with that core supporting you, and just reach your crown toward the ceiling. So we're going to work the shoulder area, neck area first. So, and if you're uncomfortable in staff position, you can just go into a comfortable seated position with your legs crossed or however. If you do cross your legs, remember, cross them the opposite way from time to time so that you allow everything to get stretched evenly. So chin into your throat center and just pull that in and allow your body to relax into that stretch along the back of your neck. Take a breath, just exhale. As you exhale, just kind of notice that may stretch a little bit more. And then we're gonna add weight, not pressure with your hands. So one hand at a time, just bring it up and put it on the back of your head. So your spine is still straight other than your neck. Which is kind of tipping forward into that neck area forward bend. And just keep pulling that chin toward your chest and relax through that whole back of your body. And then releasing your hands, tip your chin back up and notice how the back of your neck feels. Gonna be a little bit more stimulated. So we want to work the throat front of the neck. So lift your chin and as you do, keep lifting through the base of your skull too. So your whole neck area keeps stretching as you go into this little back bend through the neck area of your spine. Shoulders stay relaxed and even. The rest of your spine stays straight so you're not going into a big back bend just through the neck area. And then we're going to work the jaw a little bit. So move your jaw around, forward, backward, side to side, little circles, however it feels good. If you have any jaw issues, you may get that popping sensation, so don't do it too much. But just allow things to stretch through the throat and move around through the jaw. And then release your jaw back to neutral. Tip your head back upright. Just kind of notice any sensations going on through your neck. Side stretch for that shoulder area on each side of your body. So tip an ear over toward one side. As you do that, you'll feel the other side stretch a little bit. Don't overdo it. Some people have tension issues through this muscle area along the side of your neck. So just as much as you want. Keep both shoulders down, no hunching either shoulder up and just relax so that gets a good stretch on the side. Then the side you're tipping toward, bring that hand up, and again, weight, not pressure, on the side of your head, just giving it a little extra stretch if that's working for you. And again, if you want a little bit more, you can bring your hand down a little bit, 
or you can press it deeply into the floor if that is something you'd like to do. So go ahead and relax. Feel the stretch. Remember, no stressing and tensing, just relaxing. That's how things stretch more effectively. And then release this hand and the other hand and tip your head back upright. Feel that side, it's now different from the other side. So we're gonna balance the body, doing the same to the opposite side. So ear comes down toward that other shoulder, keep the shoulders still even, don't punch up, and just relax. Feel the stretch start, if that's enough, stay there. We'll bring your hand up, and again, just weight, not pressure, letting that side get a little more stretched. And once more, Bring the hand in and press into the mat if you'd like, or just leave that hand where it is. And again, just breathe and relax as you let that ear drop closer to the shoulder if it's ready to do that. And then the hand on the floor back to your lap if it works, and the hand on your head back down, and then tip your head back again upright. Feel the sides of your neck, a little bit more released. We're going to go just into the neck area for our twist this time. So remember, keep your shoulders even, keep your body straight through the spine, and keep lengthening up so those bones get a chance to separate so they can twist more easily. And then we're going to back out of the driveway. So go ahead and stretch up, exhale, and turn your chin toward the shoulder on one side. And just look as if you're looking out to see if anything is behind you. And keep the head reaching up and the spine straight through the rest of your body. Exhaling, deepening into that neck movement only as much as you'd like. And then when you're ready to release, stretch it up again and turn the chin back to the center. Feel your throat area, neck area, noticing how that is working. And again, lengthening up, turn your chin and look the other way. And again, go as far as you want and relax. Breathe, keep stretching the spine open, up through the crown, exhaling as deep as you want into that twist through the neck. Shoulders still facing the front. And again, lengthen up as you breathe and turn your chin back to the center. Feel the sides of your neck, the whole neck area, and just breathe and relax. So we're going to go up on our knees. If you want to have a mat, you can fold it over. If you want to get a cushion or a mat of some sort, like a garden mat to put under your knees for comfort, feel free to do that and allow your body just to sink back onto your heels and your knees straight in front of your hips. So the hip, heels are right under your sitting bones. And we're going to work our arms and shoulders a little bit. So bring one arm out, keep the shoulders and shoulder blade down, and then Using your other hand, pull back on your hand so you get a stretch across the back of the wrist. And just allow that wrist to get a good stretch. You'll feel it's not just the wrist stretching, your arm muscles also are getting a little bit of additional work. And then release that, and then pull the fingers back and press the base of your palm out away from you. And keep the elbow as straight as you can while you're doing this, just feeling what's working through that whole arm and side of your body that you're working. So just keep pressing out through the whole palm, through the bottom of your palm, and pulling the fingers back. And then release the hand so that it's flat, and spread the fingers out, and then push each finger down one at a time. And just feel the back of your hand get a good stretch as you do that, allowing each finger to move, just using your other hand to make it a little bit more emphatic. And then when you're finished with them pushing down, pull them each back a little bit. 
So our point here isn't to crack knuckles or anything, it's just to give a good stretch through that whole finger and palm. And then when you're done, spread your hand out again, really stretch it out, and then just shake it so that you feel all that circulation through the whole wrist area and hand, and bring your hand down to your knee. So if you're feeling like you need padding under your ankles, or you need to put your feet in a different position, you can come up and tuck your toes under so that your toes and the bottoms of your feet are also giving a little work while we do our next arm. So bring your other arm out. And again, same thing, using your opposite hand, just press down with that hand pulling back, getting the base of the wrist pushing out. Keep the shoulders down, shoulder blades towards your waist. Don't forget your core is still active, so those ribs are in and up. The spine is nice and straight. Maximize only as much as your wrist needs. And then pull back and press the heel of the palm and outside of your palm away, pressing it far from your body. And again, as much or as little <clears throat> as your wrist needs. And then straightening your hands, spreading your fingers, spread it out, arms still straight. And then pressing each finger at a time, working through the back of your hand and fingers and then pulling each finger back getting the palm and fingers stretching just let your hand get a good stretch and whenever you're done spread your fingers out and get a good stretch through the whole hand and then shake it out and release and if you're up on your toes go ahead and release now because yeah they get a little bit much and then let's come into a seated cross-legged position. So you can start in staff position. Bring one foot up to your inner thigh. And in that little triangle, put the other foot. And you'll come into what's called perfect posture. It gives you a little bit of a pelvic tilt so that you're slightly forward, but your spine stays nice and straight while you're seated. And at, while we're in this position, we're going to do the National Geographic Blooming Flower. So bring one hand out, put your thumb inside your palm, wrap your fingers around it, and tighten it as tight as you can. And the more you tighten it, the more you're making your bud of your flower ready to bloom. So just tighten, 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 really breathe into it. And then hold your breath a moment and tighten it a little bit more. And then as you exhale, slowly begin bringing those petals of your fingers out. So you're that time-lapse National Geographic camera filming that blooming flower, each petal just unfurling, spreading out as the fingers get all the way out, pull them back towards your body, Letting that flower bloom up toward the sun, heliotropic. Spread it out, really stretch it. And again, shake it out. And coming back down, go ahead and lift your knees back into staff position. And we'll do perfect posture to the other side. So opposite foot to the thigh, get onto your sitting bones. Use that triangle or your other foot. And just sink into your perfect posture on this side. So spine is erect, those ribs still, of course, in and up, getting that core active. Opposite arm out, whichever one you didn't do. And again, thumb inside, fingers around the thumb. Really tighten it. Get your bed really getting ready to bloom. Tighten it a lot, breathe into it. Hold your breath, tighten it more. And as you exhale, begin releasing. So just letting those fingers come slowly, petals unfurling, blooming your flower, letting those fingers spread, facing up toward the sun when you're ready to do that, maximizing that whole flower bloom up and out.
and then shake it out, lose those pillows. And release. So feel your shoulders, your neck, your arms, a little bit more energized at this moment. And then again, bringing your legs back out to stack position. So take a moment there as you breathe. So we're going to, we can just stay in staff position, or again, if you want to go back to cross leg, you can do that. Clasp your fingers together, press them away, and straighten your arms as much as you can. So elbows as straight as you can, the whole bottom of your hand, base of your palm, pressing away from you, from the base of the palm all the way across the fingers and out. And then keeping that stretch going, bring your arms right above your shoulders, Still pressing up. And then bend one elbow, bring the arm across. Press it back straight up. And then bend the other elbow and bring it down across. And press it straight back up. Keep pressing up, shoulders and shoulder blades down. Hands back to the center, right in front of your heart. And release. So we habitually cross our fingers the same way each time. So of course, we're gonna do it the opposite way this time. So shift your fingers one position over. If you don't normally do it, it'll feel weird, that's okay. And again, we're gonna press it away. So spine is straight, core is active, shoulders are down, and hands are pressing out with your elbows as straight as you can. Keep pressing out through the base of your hands, breathing. Maximize or minimize, remember whatever is right for your wrists. And then bring your arms straight above your shoulders, shoulders and shoulder blades still moving towards your legs. Bend one elbow, bring it across, bring it back up and to the other side and back up. And again, straight to the front, pressing those hands away right in front of your chest. And release. So feel a little more across the shoulders and in your circulation. And one more thing before we do a quick twist. So come into a cross leg position, just for a little variety. So we're gonna clasp the fingers and Turn your hands toward you with the palms pressed together. And then turn the palms away and down. And then bring them back up. And release. Switch your legs. And again, clasp the opposite way. Turn your fists toward you. Turn them away back to the center, and release. And then bring your arms out, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders, clasp your hands, and again, bring the arms out to the front, and kind of steeple your fingers if you want, and bring the arms toward you, or the fingers toward you, and then back away, and up. Clasp the other way, and same thing, arms out, fingers toward you, and away, and up, and release. And then cross your legs the other way, and we'll just do a seated twist today. So if you have one leg in front or on top, take the opposite hand to that knee, a little mental yoga. If you don't, just, if they're even, just choose one. Bring your hand out at shoulder level. Sitting bones connect up through your spine. And then exhaling, we're following that hand around. So hips are moving, spine is turning, ribs and shoulder behind you. Hand to the floor, just press into your hand and lift up. And then exhaling, remember, moving the hips, ribs, and shoulder as a unit into the twist. So deepen into your twist only as much as you want to. 
This hand on the knee is really not leveraging unless you really love a twist and you want a little bit more. But remember, whole spine moving into the twist together. Take a breath, just relax. Keep the spine stretching open. And then bring the hand back to shoulder level and follow it back to the center, feeling your twist energy coming maybe into that meditative activation in your skull. Switch your legs around so we can twist the other way. And again, just take a moment and breathe. Lengthen through your spine, hand to that opposite knee, other arm, shoulder level. Stretch it up and breathe. Exhale, follow it around. Hand to the mat and stretch up through your spine. Exhale, hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turns. Going deep into your twist, only as much as your body wants and needs. Remember personal practice, relaxing as much or as little as you need. Take a breath, just relax. And then again, the hand comes back up, shoulder level. And you're following it with your whole body back to the center. Take a moment feeling that twist energy, getting a little bit more activated through your spine and your skull. And we'll go into our relaxation posture. So just go ahead into corpse position and relax. Hands, palms up slightly away from your side, letting both shoulders relax a lot. So we did a lot through that next shoulder area. So go ahead and focus on releasing any tension. Relax your lower body, hips, pelvis, legs, everything. Just soften your torso, soften your face, move your jaw, release and relax everything through that whole upper body. And just allow your body to keep growing heavier as you relax. Just sink deep into that earthbound connection and let your body go. Remember, the earth supports you at all times. Just sink deep and relax. As your body releases, just allow your mind to release any thoughts in your body. And as you do, other thoughts will come to you. It's the job of your mind to produce thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, you can let each thought go unneeded, unnoticed. Anything you need to remember will come to you later. Just let it go now. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath. Disappearing without attention. Just focus on your breathing. Draw your awareness inward. Finding that peace and letting it grow. Fill your body with peace, your mind with peace, and just be peace. And of course, keep relaxing as long as you like. If you need more time, 
Or if you need to reactivate, just begin breathing more deeply, drawing energy and awareness back to the moment and to your life. As you stretch more fully and breathe more deeply, when you're ready for your yoga hug of appreciation, just bend your knees, pressing your back down, and draw your knees toward your heart. Wrap your arms around. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're done with your hug and appreciation, just pull over to the side and sit back up and get ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.